Today, I'm going to show you guys foods that are either macronutrient or micronutrient dense, perhaps even both. The goal as humans is to survive. We need calories to survive and we need vitamins and minerals, fatty acids for our cells. So these are foods that most people can get in their local supermarket that are probably still on the shelves as they're not something people are thinking of. You know, most of the pasta, the grains, the rice, all those boxed goods are taken, but those aren't really the best choices and they're actually quite far from the best choices. You know, not that you shouldn't stock up on high quality organic grains, it's just there are certainly better options. And milk products are something that's probably near the top of the list from a nutrition perspective and a caloric perspective. Milk has just about every single vitamin your body needs. It's definitely the most complete food we have here today. Uh, so it has all of the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, plenty of B vitamins, almost all of the minerals we need. Uh, it is lacking copper and iron. Uh, copper we can definitely get from some other foods here today. Iron, it's not really needed in super high amounts in the body. If anything, most people have too much iron stored in their liver right now. Uh, Omega-3, as well as vitamin C. And uh, milk does actually have a decent amount of vitamin C. Uh, the downsides of something like canned milk is that it's a heated product. Uh, so it definitely stresses your body's anti-scorbutic capabilities. Uh, you know, might not digest as well. That being said, you know, if we're trying to survive, you know, sweetened condensed milk is really perfect. You know, you have you know, organic sugar, organic milk. Uh, so the organic is kind of trying to remove all of the hypothetical negatives. You know, this isn't necessarily the most nutritious, raw grass-fed dairy product, although it certainly has a lot of nutrition. And I would even bet if all you consumed was sweetened condensed milk compared to a standard American diet, it's actually really, really healthy. Uh, so this is mostly carbohydrate based. You know, there is some fat, there is some protein, and if you did only consume this, uh, you know, your, your macronutrient ratios might not be correct. That being said, you know, there's evaporated milk, there's other canned milk products outside of sweetened condensed milk that you can literally just survive off of for months to even a year or two in incredibly, incredibly good health. Uh, so condensed milk, uh, you definitely want to go organic on everything if possible. Uh, you know, what's better than organic is local, uh, not processed, nothing added to it. You know, that being said, I don't really think making your own condensed milk is that easy to do. I mean, you could, you know, you could go to like a local farm, buy a lot of raw dairy, uh, I guess, boil it down, add some honey to it and make a, a higher quality version of this. You know, that being said, you know, this is, I think like $3.54 $4, and you're getting, you know, almost 1500 calories for a very small space. Second, we have nuts. And this applies to really any nut or seed, although most are very high in omega-6. I've always pushed macadamia nuts as they have one of the most acceptable omega fatty acid ratios. The anti-nutrient content is fairly low, but you know, the role of nuts and seeds in a diet like this, you know, where you're trying to survive for months and months and months on non-perishable food, is magnesium, copper, and manganese. Whenever you look at plant foods, you're basically looking at minerals and perhaps small amounts of certain B vitamins and vitamin C. You know, the main thing you're missing in plant foods is a certain mineral profile and a certain fat soluble vitamin profile, uh, which of course we achieve with the animal-based foods. But you know, something like, uh, this is raw organic macadamia nut butter, very, very expensive stuff. Uh, here we have some raw organic macadamia nuts. There's definitely like rancidity, uh, mycotoxin concerns, more so than the anti-nutrient concerns. Don't really focus too much on anti-nutrients today, guys, because you know these foods are so calorically dense, uh, so nutritious in general, that you know the small amount of oxalates, phytic acid, isn't really what we're worried about. We're worried if these foods were sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, how they actually got from point A to point B. Uh, so something you guys might not have thought of was uh, chocolate. And as with the sweetened condensed milk, you know, that, that base milk product without the sugar added is something people might think is healthier. But again, in a survival situation, you really want those calories. So organic sugar, you know, the glucose and the fructose 
really is perfect for survival. Uh, but chocolate is very high in fat, uh, has some B vitamins, uh, but, but why I like chocolate so much in this context is it is one of the highest magnesium foods and one of the highest copper foods. So, you know, in regards to balancing the milk products, you know, just sweetened condensed milk and chocolate sounds like a pretty fun diet to eat for, you know, a couple months to a year. And honestly, you would be pretty healthy on it. Granted, you removed all other negative oxidant lifestyle factors. Uh, so this is 57% cacao. You know, get something you enjoy eating. If you're going to be stuck eating something, you know, the extra sugar isn't going to hurt. You know, everyone's always, you know, victimizing and blaming sugar. A video that I'm going to do soon is actually how Wi-Fi, EMF, and non-native frequencies are the cause of things like diabetes and sugar is being blamed for that stuff. So uh, next we have what I want to refer to as any rendered animal fat. Uh, this is grass-fed ghee, organic, super, super high quality, super, super expensive. And with any rendered fat, we're not looking at water-soluble vitamins like B and C, and we're not looking at minerals. Uh, ghee and butter are kind of like an exception because they're kind of high in calcium. Uh, but all you're really going to see in these fat products is a large amount of fat-soluble vitamins, especially vitamin A, uh, some amount of vitamin D, some vitamin K, but really what we're looking at is retinol. That's why, you know, we have the yellow, orange. Uh, this is something that you can really, you know, just add to things, used to cook with. Uh, the main issue here, this is pure fat. And energy calories are generally very easy to get in survival. You know, the carbohydrates and the fat, you know, are fairly accessible with non-perishable foods. You know, that's really what we have here. You know, sweetened condensed milk is a lot of sugar, a lot of energy. Macadamia nuts, a lot of fat, a lot of energy. You know, if anything, we're lacking protein. So, you know, something like a rendered animal fat, although it's useful, it's not as useful as you might think it was. And then something that's not really a survival food, more of a necessity, is something with a very, very high vitamin C content. Uh, so this doesn't necessarily have to be like a vitamin C supplement type of powder, like Ace Roll or Cherry Powder, which is incredibly high in vitamin C. Uh, this could be like a blueberry powder or strawberry powder, uh, something high quality, organic and freeze dried. Uh, if you were to eat a large amount of this powder, like 50 to 75 grams, which is roughly two and a half to three and a half tablespoons, it's super, super, super high in B vitamins and minerals. But the thing is, as a supplement, realistically, you know, when you're consuming like a half a teaspoon of this stuff, you're only really just getting a large, large, large amount of vitamin C. Uh, so by getting the vitamin C, by keeping the antiscorbutic properties in the diet, we're able to eliminate the problem that a lot of these foods are heated and processed. This is kind of bringing the health of the raw element back into the diet. So, you know, we're going to be locked up again. You definitely want some vitamin C and there's a reason the news is not covering vitamin C and it's kind of like censoring articles about vitamin C. Uh, definitely watch my video on antioxidant cycles if you want to know more about that. Another thing I really like is any coconut product. Coconut mana, coconut cream, coconut oil, coconut milk. Tastes decent, honestly guys, I really, really dislike coconut. It's probably one of my least favorite flavors. Uh, that being said, it's very high in fat, which means it's super high calorie. And depending on the type of coconut product, it can have vitamins and minerals. Uh, the more water-based it is, the more vitamins and minerals it will have. This is coconut cream, so it can have some B vitamin, some vitamin C, some vitamin E, as well as minerals. But if you have like a pure coconut oil, don't really expect it to be super nutritious. It's going to be predominantly fat calories. Uh, but coconut cream, coconut mana, and like coconut milk are definitely better tasting and more approachable than pure coconut oil for survival. Uh, you know, if I was going to stock up on a coconut product, it would probably be coconut cream. The next product is dried fruit. And, you know, if you look at the nutrient profile of dried fruit, it's actually quite amazing. Uh, a lot of B vitamins, vitamin C, and more importantly, minerals, magnesium, copper, manganese. Something like dried figs would be an excellent food to add to a carnivore diet. Uh, not only that, you know, 
seven of these relatively small figs is 100 calories. So they are pretty calorically dense. Uh, the main discrepancy between something like dried fruit and honey is nutrition. Honey really is like pure, pure, pure energy. Uh, I'm not sure if a, a raw high quality honey with like propolis and cappings added to it has you know, a small amount of minerals and a small amount of B vitamins, but the amount of minerals and B vitamins are so insignificant compared to the amount in a high quality dried fruit product. So if you're gonna choose between raw honey and dried fruit, for me, it's really, really hard to say go with the honey outside of it being more calorically dense. Like this is, you know, 22 tablespoons of honey, which is like 1500 calories, over 1500 calories. This is like 700 calories. So from a storage perspective, you know, this honey is more than twice as many calories, but from a nutrition perspective, you know, the figs are definitely the way to go. And again, we have organic. The goal here is to reduce the negative agrochemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides, the fungicides as much as possible. Uh, so these are the eight foods that I have here to physically show you that I purchased either because I was going to feed them to my family or consume them myself. Uh, most of the stuff I am giving to my family. I honestly, I want to try sweetened condensed milk because I don't even know what it tastes like. Um, I have been doing experiments with the Ace Rolla cherry powder. Uh, this is kelp and the reason I didn't put this or didn't want to really include this in my top 10 list is because of ocean pollution and I want to do more research on that and there are some concerns about that uh, but you know kelp is so high in minerals as well as iodine that being said in the context of the other foods we have today you don't really need any more minerals and milk does have iodine uh, so we're not necessarily iodine deficient but having a few pieces of seaweed even if there might be a pollution problem is definitely not the end of the world uh, so Two foods I do recommend that I think I do have some canned fish in my cabinet and I might have some whey protein lying around somewhere, but these are two actual like really, really, really nutritious foods that I think most people know about. The canned fish is an obvious survival one, the whey protein not as much. And depending on whether you're getting like shellfish, like canned oysters, canned clams, um, mussels versus fatty fish versus lean fish, that will drastically vary the nutrient profile. And for survival, the most nutrient dense foods are the highest fat ones. So you definitely wanna to lean towards the shellfish, the mackerel, the anchovies, the fattier canned fish. And the main reason you wanna have at least some canned fish on hand and maybe eat it once a week is for those omega-3s. You know, all of the foods we have here today have preformed versions of omega-3 like alpha linolenic acid and the body can convert some of them, but you definitely want the EPA and the DHA in the canned fish uh, at least once a week. Uh, whey protein is probably like the most nutritious food that an average American person might eat if they work out because it is ample in B vitamins. It does have a lot of minerals, especially calcium, iron, zinc, copper. Uh, if you've never looked at the mineral profile of whey protein, it's actually quite amazing. So getting like a big, bag of quality protein powder isn't a bad idea for you know this time of survival and pantry foods and uh, you know non-perishable foods that being said all of this stuff is kind of on the expensive side if you're buying organic really high quality um i mean macadamia nut is prohibitively expensive uh, i would say dried fruit can be pretty expensive everything else is kind of reasonable to be honest you know chocolate sweetened condensed milk um acerola powder honey you know per calorie for what you're getting you're actually pretty good uh, but those really 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 high quality canned fish products and the really 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 high quality whey protein products might cost you a bit uh, on frankie syringe meat we are looking to get you guys some more pemmican like survival food in a more affordable amount uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that in the near future I'll definitely do a few videos on that when we have it. But if you guys really do plan on preparing for this happening again, I would definitely look online for bulk wholesalers because you know, you're not going to be able to just go to the supermarket and, and keep buying and buying and buying. It's going to be expensive. It's not really uh, practical right now with how supermarkets are. So perhaps you can go online 
and buy larger amounts bulk wholesale and get a discount. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. Uh, hopefully this helps some of you guys out. Uh, I wish I was sponsored by some of these companies, but I am not. I'm just here to help you guys out. And hopefully in the future, I'm in a position where I'm providing you guys with uh, some foods that are similar to this uh, at a more affordable price, as well as a benefit to everyone as a whole. If you guys want to support me, there's a bunch of stuff down in the comments below. Uh, we have Frankie's syringe meat where again, we will have some non-perishable survival foods in the near future in a larger volume at a very affordable price. Uh, I have organ supplements, which I actually have a sale on. And you know, the only thing you would really need to add to this type of diet might be a few supplements. I mean, especially vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, which I do have available. Uh, the minerals might not be necessary to add, uh, which I will have in the future. And the full spectrum organ supplements, like the beef liver and that type of stuff, would be nice to add to a diet like this. Speaking of meat, some of you guys might be wondering, Frank, why didn't you mention jerky or dried beef products or, or a ton of other products that are so obvious that you didn't mention? You know, something like jerky is prohibitively expensive and it's a pretty obvious one. Uh, but you know, there, there's a bunch of other products and reasons that uh, I don't exactly have off the direct top of my head. Uh, so you can also go to frank if you guys want to check out my book as well as reach out to me for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, but thanks again for joining me today, guys. And if you would like to join us for a live stream later, uh, I don't think we're going to do a workout live stream. We'll just hang out with you guys for a bit. Maybe we'll even do a vegan critique. That's going to be on the channel Frank Tufano. You guys enjoy the rest of your night.